Welcome everybody. Hey, how many folks were here last for the last one we did? We did one last month. Oh my God, we got a lot of returned folks. That's awesome. How many people have not been to one yet and they're just covered here now? That's great. So it's got a guy, probably 50-50 mix, which is awesome. This is our mid-journey kind of crystallation of what we're trying to do here today, which is we are now going to look in the big picture. Here we are 25 years from now with our kind of loosely coupled intelligent machines looking back on the long journey that it's taken us to get there and looking at all the great accomplishments we've done and we're thinking, oh my God, what we have did with this amazing new technology. And so this is the positive possibilities gathering here. So anyhow, that kind of crystallized it for us. But since half of you were not here before, I'm going to do what they do in TV, kind of give you a kind of a the recap. Because I think you've got to understand the context of what we're trying to pull off here. And I think it makes a difference. And uh, so I'm going to basically give you the quick, the quick hit here. So there will be slides here and then in the back there. And we'll give a little overview. And then we're going to get to some amazing speakers. Now, isn't this an amazing time? We've seemed to have crossed the threshold into a kind of not just a new era or a new kind of period here but potentially a new age where we are, humans are now going to be working closely with intelligent machines. There seems to be in the last six months with generative opening up AI to everybody, this feeling that we are now really possibly have this superpower kind of that can augment human kind of abilities in ways that we are just now beginning to totally kind of rock. So there was a kind of a moment in time that we all just want to kind of take a breath there and say, what an amazing moment here. On the other hand, there seems to be two narratives that are kind of popping up here with this emergence of this powerful new and kind of potentially transformative new tool. And we've seen people like start freaking out about it. We've seen the kind of media kind of go dark on it. We've seen kind of people start, you know, the public kind of get weirded out. We've seen kind of Washington and you know, Brussels, and everyone trying to figure out oh, how we're going to stop it. We've even got some technologists talking about human extinction. So that's kind of the one side is a total negative nail here. But on the other hand, all the technologists that I hang out with and a lot of people that we know here, and most people in this room, I'm guessing, would say, oh my God, let's think a minute here for all the powerful, positive stuff we got going with this technology too. And so this is essentially what we're trying to do here is connect up a network not to put aside there's going to be actual risks that there are things we've got to worry about, but actually to start bringing out now, at a moment in time, we've really got to be thinking about what's possible with this stuff. And that's in particularly true about this, uh, this event tonight. Now, the other negative narrative out there is how, you know, the last year or so, it's been, oh my God, San Francisco's a disaster, everyone's leaving California, we're in doom loops, you know, who would ever want to live here? And that's exactly the time when the media starts doing that that you know we're getting reborn. It's going to be, it's a total reinvention happening here. So the last six months have, in fact, been this crazy energy coming back to the city and a kind of a reinvention, I think, in San Francisco. That's why I kind of threw this one up here, like even, you know, it's the kind of Star Trek. It's kind of, you know, we're going to reinvent ourselves until the 23rd century, whatever. It's just going to keep happening, folks. So anyhow, the point is, we got a kind of an interesting group here. And instead of thinking, okay, with all these questions about AI, um, you know, do we want people to be contemplating this in Washington, you know, 80-year-old kind of senators? Or do we want people to be figuring out these questions, you know, where do we want to go? Well, why wouldn't you go to the community that's actually been through a bunch of these technology revolutions that really understands the potential of this, but also is responsible enough and balanced enough and human enough to understand we've got to do the right thing with this stuff, too? And so that's, with all these questions exploding, that's what we're trying to do here is to pull together a network of people that can really think this stuff through and cross-connect and build with this over time. Now, I kind of talk about this as the great progression. I think we're on the cusp of another, not just an AI kind of world historical boomer on this new technology, but we've got bioengineering that's kind of opening up. We've got clean tech and climate tech opening up. We're looking at not just technological booms, but also economic booms, and also the potential, I would argue, for a kind of a new era of progress in many different ways across all kinds of societies. So before, as coming off the pandemic, having done a bunch of kind of event series before the pandemic and all, I was thinking, well, what if we kind of did a, a series where we start to ask, go to every one of these fields that's going through these transformations, and we ask kind of four kind of key questions, like, what is really going on here? Let's think about the positive reframe of what's possibly going on in these fields, rather than the kind of negative, oh my God, the thing is going to pieces. What's probably coming? 
One way or the other, it's coming in the next 10 years. Let's start thinking about short term in the next 10 years, what's going on in every one of these fields, whether it's fusion energy, whether it's politics, whether it's you know, economic theories, whatever. What's possible to achieve in 25 years? Like, what's the best case of a lot of this stuff? Before we start worrying about all the problems, what's possible to do with these things? And ultimately, what we should do now to hit that high box. So that was kind of the idea of this series, which when you saw the invite, the invite is the Great Progression series. And it's not just about AI, but with those questions, in the last six months, there's been some really key questions that have emerged around um, generative AI. And one of them, what we did here, is what are the real implications? What's the technological capabilities? The true technological capabilities is this, and what are the immediate or near-term business implications? And we did that last month, and half of you were here, and we had a lot more folks. It was kind of a jam space. It was great. This group today, with a kind of infusion of new kind of optimism, we got are the positive possibilities. We're trying to think a little bit further, 25 years, broader across all kinds of different fields, not just business, and think, you know, what could we actually do with this stuff? And then we're going to next month, we've already got it on the books here, uh, what's going to be the actual risk. There's risks, but how do we respond when we move forward? Not, not shut down the whole thing and all kind of stuff we're talking about, some people are screaming for. It's like, what can we really do? And again, take a responsible hit on this, but not get stuck in the kind of doomer kind of thinking. Now, the only way to figure this stuff out, no one knows the answer to any of these questions, by the way, but all of us hold a piece of it. And so this is Stuart, Brad, for the young folks who, uh, for the young folks who, you know, there's a lot of young Gen AI kind of founders here who, you know, kind of in their 20s. It's like, if you don't know Stuart, Stuart's kind of an icon in the Bay Area here. He was uh, Steve Jobs, you know, was the inspiration for Steve Jobs, all kinds of stuff. But one of the things about Stuart, which is great, and, and I, he was, I worked with him at his company, Reinvent, uh, sorry, uh, Global Business Network, of which there's many people here, uh, and also the Long Now Entangled here. But one of the things about Stuart, which is amazing, is he knew how to convene people. He never had all the answers himself, but he knew who to bring together and how to bring them together. So all he would do is kind of throw the right party, whether it was the Trips Festival in the 60s that kind of set off the 60s crazy revolution, or, you know, the hackers conferences, all that kind of stuff. His whole life has just been littered with these convenings. So I kind of took inspiration from Stuart about that, you know, why don't we just start bringing people together here? And why not do it right here in Ground Zero, right here in San Francisco, right in the ferry building, right in the shack? And so that's what we did. So my company, Reinvent Futures here with Joe here, is kind of my partner here. We had done a series before the pandemic, which is what's now San Francisco. Some of you might remember that, where we cross-connected all kinds of tech fields. But we kind of formed a new company to say, let's, with this new, this new agenda. We thought, you know what? We got a partner with an amazing space, and that's Shack 15 here. I don't know, is Natasha here? Is Natasha, maybe she's not here. Anyhow, Shack 15, awesome place. They've gotten, given us this space to kind of convene this, these kind of make these convenings. Great partners of ours. Cerebral Valley, we wanted to connect to the next generation of all these young AI founders and technologists and all the people. And this Cerebral Valley is one of the groups here, probably the leading group that's pulling all these hackathons together. They, they have them here, they've done a bunch of hackathons here. They've got a lot of great young blood and actually is, uh, is Marcus here from that? Do we have Marcus give a hand up here for Marcus? Or he'll say there's a group of folks that have helped organize that. And then we needed basically sponsors, but these are sponsors not just for their resources. These people are bringing their amazing networks together, folks. That's Autodesk, uh, which we're gonna have, we're gonna hear from them later, but basically Stephanie kind of got the ball rolling saying, hey, this seems like something we wanna do. Um, and they've been brought, bringing some great folks together. Slalom, now Slalom just had of two hours of kind of round table conversations about the implication of AI and bio. They did that with Jane Metcalf, who talked last week. Who is Jade here? There's Jade. Jade is basically a, a kind of founder of Proto Life. She also had a past life, was a co-founder of uh, Wired Magazine itself, but she's now on the bio story and, and she helped convene an amazing group of people. We're gonna have a couple of them speak here later today about what they were accomplishing there. And uh, Cap Gemini, who had kind of backed some previous stuff, they're here. We got someone in, there. one of their, is, uh, Mark here just flew in from Amsterdam, basically, to be here, part of this, this conversation. And we got White and Case, which is a new, a new sponsor, just came in here. It's a great global law firm. They're all over trying to figure out this stuff. Do we have uh, Brooke here? Is Brooke here? Okay, there she is. She's waving back there. Anyhow, thanks for all your kind of backing on this, and also people are bringing to the table, too. Now, one last thing I want to say here before we get into the conversation is... Um, the positive, what, one of the things we're trying to do here is, at least without being overly you know, pushy here, kind of help the, phrase a, a positive reframe in the media. And so our last event, uh, Brad Stone of Bloomberg was here, and he basically used us, our little meeting here, and kind of what came out of that meeting, 
as the lead of the cover story of, the, of this month's Business Week. So all over the kind of world here in all these, all these kind of airports, we're going to basically, this little gathering here in Shack was actually out there. Uh, we also had the New Yorker there. We had a bunch of folks. We actually today, just so you know here, we've got Axios here. We've got Reuters, and I think they've got a photographer here. We've got a Taiwanese, actually, uh, business today from Taiwan. There they are back there, who's actually brought their, their crew in with a, basically a, a photographer. Anyhow, the point is people are interested in what people in the Bay Area here are trying to figure this stuff out. So now we're going to do a meeting of the minds. We kind of layered everything. There's no kind of one person we're going to listen to. We're all raise hands about questions about it. Everybody here has a piece of the puzzle. And so one of the things we thought is have the kind of format that we're going to have a bunch of folks give five minutes, five minutes to give a little kind of insight into what they see happening coming out of the, in, with this technology. With this positive frame for this one, we'll be talking about risks later uh, in July. So the idea here is to get a lot of insights quickly from a lot of amazing people to kind of push out our, po our thinking about pos what's possible with this technology. Mm -hmm.